Hello everyone, Moonrider here, and today we're taking a look at an FPS Gamer's Dream Keyboard. This is a wired 60% keyboard with detachable USB-C cable, packed with RGB backlighting, customizable and adjustable magnetic switches with tunable rapid trigger, and so much more. It's Red Dragon's brand new K617 magnet switch keyboard, and they sent it out to me to give my honest review. Today we'll cover in more detail what it's like to game on, as well as specs, pros and cons of the magnetic switches versus mechanical switches, and what it's like for regular productivity as a portable design with 60% layout and 61 keys. If you're in the market for a new gaming keyboard or looking to take a dive into magnetic switches, then this may just be the keyboard for you. All right, let's start with the design and build quality. The K671 is a 60% keyboard with 61 keys. Its portable design does make it a great traveling companion that easily fits into a backpack, and it also doesn't take up a whole lot of space on your desk. As a gaming keyboard, the small footprint is perfect as it gives you exactly the keys you need without taking up unnecessary space on your desk. As for aesthetics, you'll notice right away this is a dark keyboard. The body is all black, while the keys come in ascending black to light gray gradient. And while the primary key lettering is translucent for the RGB backlighting, the secondary functions lettering is light gray on the darker keycaps and dark gray on the lighter ones. For the most part, the contrast works. However, on the second and third rows from the top, the dark gray function lettering doesn't contrast enough, making it very difficult to see and read the secondary functions lettering, mainly the arrow keys on the WASD keys. There isn't any detail or flashy design on the body either, which I find a bit disappointing given this is an $80 keyboard. It's a basic plastic rectangle in matte black with the only pop of contrast coming from a white Red Dragon logo on the front right corner. There is a USB-C port located on the left side toward the back. And on the bottom, you'll find two flat rubber pads and two kickstand feet that are useful for one extra height adjustment. Since there are no rubber pads towards the back of the keyboard, Red Dragon designed the kickstand feet with rubber texture when they're folded down. And to match with the rubber pads up front, the retractive feet do protrude out from the body. Build quality aside, the main reason you're buying this keyboard is for the switches. After all, Red Dragon supply their own brand of magnetic switches that make use of Hall Effect sensors that respond to the presence of a magnetic field. And here's how they sound. In practice, they feel like a mechanical linear switch, but unlike a typical linear switch, magnetic switches offer a few extra perks such as rapid trigger response, dynamic keystroke, and upwards of twice the lifespan, or so Red Dragon claims. In fairness, with no mechanical parts to fail, magnetic switches are known to last longer. But a downside to the magnetic switches is that even though they are removable, Red Dragon says they are not hot swappable. Now I'm sure you want to know all about customizing these switches, so let's go back and take a closer look at those features. Let's start with Rapid Trigger, which allows for adjustments to be made to the actuation point from anywhere between 0.1mm and 4mm, and this can be accomplished within Red Dragon software for the K671 Magnet Switch Keyboard. I attempted to conduct a test on how well the adjustments to actuation points worked in the real world. To do this, I select three keys, F, G, and H. I set F's actuation point all the way down to 4mm, G remains neutral at 2mm, and H is set as the rapid trigger, adjusting it to 0.1 millimeters. The difference between four millimeters and two millimeters is honestly disappointing. Even though F is set to actuate at four millimeters, it always actuates well before bottoming out. In fact, it feels like it actuates not far past neutral G. The difference between two millimeters and 0.1 millimeters is far more noticeable as I barely have to tap H for it to actuate. As great as it is to set actuation so high, it's a shame that level of actuating precision doesn't carry through the entire travel distance of the switch. Still, I imagine more gamers will be using the Rapid Trigger feature more for quick clicks, in which case this feature does still deliver in that regard. Like Rapid Trigger, Dynamic Keystroke, or DKS, is another game changer for gamers as it allows for multiple actions within one keystroke. This feature can be found within Red Dragon software under Senior Keys by selecting DKS followed by Create. This opens up a mapping grid that lets you assign keys and follow up actions from other keys or key combos. For instance, I play a lot of Borderlands, so I assign walk as active across all actuation points. 
Then I had left shift to actuate only when W key reaches the 3.6 millimeter actuation point and disengage when the point is released. Right, that should be all set then. Nothing more to click or accept. At this point, I hop into my game and no DKS. This stumped me for so long. I could not get it to work no matter what I tried or thought I tried and I thought I tried everything. Eventually, I gave up assuming either the switches or software was jank. I wrote a scathing review of this keyboard, even recorded the voiceover and got halfway through filming B-roll before discovering, apparently, the one thing I did not think to try. Obviously, I went back and rewrote the review, so let me share with you how to actually apply these assignments so you don't get this keyboard and think you got gypped too. With your senior key mappings finished, remember that main key you're using. In my example, that would be W. Go back to the star icon called Key Custom. On the keyboard diagram, I'll click W, then senior keys to the right of type. Then in this drop-down box, make sure DKS1 or DKS2 for whichever DKS mapping you're going for. Then finally click download. If you want to download additional DKS mappings, just make sure you're selecting the main key for each action. And while we're still on the topic of DKS mappings, you can adjust the trigger points here by clicking the numbers above the outside arrows. Adjustments can be set within 0.1 millimeters and 3.6 millimeter parameters. As for creating mappings for toggle and whatever MT is under senior keys, or even macros, which can be found by clicking on this icon, repeat the aforementioned process. Thankfully, the RGB section of the software is straightforward. The left side of the UI contains brightness and speed sliders when applicable to the RGB type you've chosen. For example, neon and breath. For types such as wave, you'll get an additional direction selector just below brightness and speed. And for static, you'll only have the brightness option. Types are selected in the middle of the UI with static icons, but descriptions do pop up when hovered over by the cursor. Just to the right of the brightness and speed sliders, you'll see your color options in the form of a color wheel and preset colors. If you're looking to fully customize the RGB on your keyboard, you can do so either by assigning custom RGB to individual keys, selecting groups like alphabets or WASD plus arrows, or click and drag over groups of keys to select en masse. Regardless of the RGB type you choose, colors are vibrant and bright. Still, there are 20 RGB presets to choose from, even accessible with function plus right alt if you want something quick and easy. Now, the last bit I wanna cover with this keyboard is how it handles productive tasks apart from gaming. I mentioned earlier in the video, I do enjoy using this for gaming, but when I'm editing video or typing the script for this video, I'm not using it. I've been using this big blue beefcake, the K656, also from Red Dragon. The main issue I have with the K617 magnet variant outside of gaming is its odd choice of arrow key placement. Maybe this is a more common thing that I'm familiar with, but on another compact keyboard I have, the arrow keys, while secondary functions, are still located in the same vicinity arrow keys are located. On this key move snow fox, the arrows are just assigned to these keys. This placement feels familiar and it's right next to the function key. Compare that to using my left hand for arrow commands while the function key is still on the right feels too weird, like trying to write with your non-dominant hand. I can do it, but it slows down productivity. Other than that, it has most if not all the functions you need, except perhaps a dedicated print screen button. Right, conclusion time. I received the K617 magnet switch variant with high hopes. The previous two keyboards Red Dragon sent me became some of my favorites and I was hoping this would impress me in the same way. For the most part, it does, though not without some caveats. I'll admit its price of $80 is pretty high for a keyboard that isn't wireless, not ideal for productivity, Rapid Trigger could use more precision between two and four millimeters, and in my opinion, a bit lackluster on the styling. But taking its performance perks like DKS and that crazy response of 0.1 millimeter Rapid Trigger into account, I think it's a great option for competitive gamers, and the customization gives you the control to set pretty much any useful combination of keys and commands you can think of on one switch. So it may not be perfect, but at least it's great. Anyway, that's it for my review of the Red Dragon K617 with magnetic switches. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like and also subscribe to the channel for more gaming setup content and tech reviews like this. Thanks for watching. Later.